Hello, this is Warpath1985 speaking in today's 6th day of the 12 days of war. I should be talking about the G.I. Joe Pursuit of Cobra Ice Cutter with the Snow Serpent Officer. Now, this was, of course, another G.I. Joe Pursuit of Cobra vehicle that was uh, released, I believe, it was back in 2010. And uh, this figure was originally supposed to be pop the image over here. But more or less was used in uh, promotional images and such like that. As the Rise of Cobra version of the Snow Serpent. Interesting to say the least. Of course, the Snow Serpent officer slash commander was first released way back in I believe it was 2004 or 2005. During the uh, G.I. Joe Operation Flaming Moth uh, event, per se, in the Joe Con subline. Or most of Joe Con exclusive. And it was packaged with the Ice Viper Officer as well. It was soon later on released in a multi pack with the. I believe it was with uh, Scribe Iron, a heavy weapons version of the. Uh, Cobra Viper, normal Cobra Viper, but in winter gear, particularly winter color scheme, both of them were winter color scheme, including uh, scrap iron. A uh, winter gear version of the uh, Cobra Tele Viper, a snow serpent with a exclusive paint app on its uh, parachute, which I showed up in the last review. A Brazooka Trooper um, snow serpent. And a Snow Serpent Officer. Probably look at image of the whole multi-pack here because that'll probably save me some time, I guess. Now, this figure was pretty much is currently the final release of the Snow Serpent Officer because there's only like three. And I don't think the uh, classified version with the wolf's pelt technically counts. However, I wouldn't be shocked if it does. Now, this figure... <clears throat> does <clears throat> come with the normal accessories that is pretty much synonymous with the uh, Cobra Snow Serpent. And this, this base plate. A white AK-47 with a skeleton-like stock. I'm trying to focus onto his gun. Very nice. Comes with two snowshoes, but due to my figure having heavy paint apps to his feet, he can't really wear them. Sadly. Is it the same as 20th anniversary version? He also has a red backpack. Has a couple pouches, a sleeping bag, a canteen, etc. Very nice. A red rocket launcher with a white stand, per se. Or more like a bipod. The figure has a red parachute vest, or more or less harness. A white fur. Um, not really cold, but more or less just um collar that surrounds the neck and soldiers and the head also has red goggles which is different from all the previous versions of the snow serpent officer and snow serpent as well it also has red boots and zoom back in it's fun to mention this a gunmetal helmet more or less a faceplate for articulation it does rely on standard 20th anniversary styled hinges swivels more hinges in the actual mm, general abdomen has pretty decent this would describe it ab crunch Really good arcing back. 
decent ball joint, but is hindered by the uh, fur collar per se. The legs are also limited due to the uh, harness. Has a nice knee bend, nice kick. Can't even go that far. Pretty decent spread. And only on this foot on my figure can move and articulate due to the other foot actually not really breaking but just stressing out. I don't want to break it because my other figures, um, the Pursuit of Crow version of the 30th anniversary, uh, should leave this off. Um, Steel Brigade and my G.I. Joe Dollar General, uh, what was his name? Uh, Duke. We're super stressed in our legs and both of them broke actually. So I don't really want to risk that. Especially on this figure. <clears throat> Here is the ice cutter itself. It does have a removable turret with a general gimmick of swapping with other weapon systems. For example, this his tank. You can touch it to here. And just plug it in there. Like so uh -huh, it's quite hard. There you go. And of course you can use good example <coughs> this tow missile on the uh, port or most plug into the port and replace the at least also either a laser rifle or laser turret or a big really big machine gun. But yeah. You can just replace it with a tow missile. And it works when it's fine. Now this wasn't the first uh, vehicle to have this general gimmick. I believe we first started out with this his tank, but I'll probably talk about it in its own review. And it was also a universal gimmick with other vehicles like the Vamp, the uh, his Scout, and one more vehicle that I'm forgetting. I believe it was um, I can't remember. It wasn't really Doom Cycle. I forgot her name, but she was a figure that had more stark armor. It's pretty strange. The vehicle also has a windshield wiper with paint on snow, or snowflakes, on there, which is quite nice. Let's put the turret back on there. The turret is articulated. It can move up. And not so down, but the general first hinge can make it go down a little bit further. You can also move it forward and back. And of course, you can do pretty much normal turret shenanigans and even rotate, which is quite nice. It also has a back wheel, which can roll quite nicely. And ice covered, basically. It's kind of the final evolution of the G.I. Joe. What was it? The G.I. Joe uh, Cobra Boar. And its general gimmick is. Let me just bring this notebook here. Uh, to basically. I hope this works. Um, do that, basically. Very similar to the Battle Ram, or Battle Tram. I can't remember what it's called from Master Universe. You can just move it along the surface. The well, It's kind of. Cardinal was saying it has to be a surface with general texture or preview of surface for him to work because on a normal like wooden table like this or a glass table it can't really move or most activate the gimmick but yeah this is basically if we were correctly from the actual description of the ice cover is to carve up trenches or areas in snow or general the polar ice caps Pretty specific, but ultimately a pretty fun gimmick. Especially when you move it at a very rapid pace, the cockpit can open. It does have a interior, but it does not have many uh, computer details. It just has this focus on there. Um, not really like a computer screen, but it's something. It has some joysticks in the general mold in. Was on seat and a couple more details, but ultimately all those get covered up when you use your included 
Cobra Snow Super Officer. And just put them in there like so. It is a, quite a tight fit. And you can also put the other accessories in there like so. And we'll see just putting the backpack in there, for example. And yeah. Very nice look and very nice fit. It also has some windows on the side that are actually open or in, more or less not really covered by a plastic window, which is another detail. That's a fourth mention earlier, but it, it exists. It doesn't really have any of real importance other than just weird details. <laughs> Alright, so about that, my camera sadly died. Now for size comparisons with the other eels, because if you've seen my previous video, still serpents are technically eels. How interesting. Here is with a rise cover eel. Here he is with an ice viper. Here he is with a snow serpent multi pack version. A para viper. And hopefully he doesn't fall over. Good, he didn't. A rise cover para viper. Now, I do technically recommend this vehicle and the figure that is included with it, the G.I. Joe <clears throat> and Pursuit of Cobra, Cobra Snow Serpent Officer. However, the vehicle and the figure itself is extraordinarily expensive and hard to come by. I was lucky enough to find it for a nice deal of $25, which is pretty good, if you ask me. Whilst you usually find this figure for 50 or sometimes $70, either mint inside the package or even out in the box. Majority of the time the 50 dollar versions and are actually 50 if you call correctly much of the 50 dollar listings you find on the internet are actually just out of box versions and the majority of 70 to 100 dollar versions are the uh, sealed and packaged ones. Either way, finding this figure in the vehicle itself is very hard and very difficult but if you can't find a particular price, I do recommend picking it up, especially because these, the uh, ice cutter itself is actually a relatively fun vehicle, and it being a much more smaller uh, core vehicle, it doesn't take up that much cell space compared to uh, his tanks and etc. Especially with the uh, his attack scout, another vehicle that came out around the same time, which was a vehicle that combined with the normal hissing that came out with the Pacific Coast Return Line and the Hiss Attack Scout and basically pretty much made the entire thing a giant shelf hog but this by itself including the snow serpent and other snow serpents that you might have like this one don't really take out that much space which is very nice and that's all for the uh, sixth day of the G.I. Joe um, uh, 12 days of war version technically because this is a G.I. Joe theme 12 days of war um the decks review will be about well Joe's basically um I believe we'll be starting out with the uh Humvee I'm not really sure but yeah uh man that's all for this uh review like comment and subscribe and I'll see you for day seven